joining. Uh, I'm Pastor Lenny at Sawdust Road Baptist Church, and uh, we're so glad you've chosen uh, to join us this morning for worship. Uh, I know that these are uh, less than uh, ideal um, times, uh, and yes, in many instances, we think of them as uncertain times, but the certainty that we have is in Christ Jesus. And so uh, as you uh, choose um, the place of worship um, here on, on Facebook, we're so glad you've chosen uh, Sawdust Road uh, to have your Sunday worship. I hope you have a, a cup of coffee in hand and uh, your family around you uh, as we uh, minister the Word of God uh, to all those uh, who are uh, out there today. And uh, Lord, uh, Lord uh, I pray uh, Father, that uh, lives will be changed uh, through this time. Uh, this is kind of how it's going to go. Uh, last night, uh, Russ and Jack, our worship leaders, uh, invited us into their home, and we were able to uh, record some worship. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that, and I will return uh, with our message this morning live at uh, beginning at 1045 uh, Central Time. 11.45 Eastern Time for all my friends who are watching uh, in that time zone. If you're in California, an hour behind, so 9.45 uh, your time. Lord bless you and keep you, and uh, may he shine his face upon each and every one of you. Have a great morning.
Because his promises will never fade. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his grace is amazing. We're going we're gonna to close with an old hymn that I know you all will know and remember. So wherever you are, in your home, in your living room, if maybe you're still in bed, haven't gotten up yet, that's fine. Drinking coffee. You sing with us. You sing with us of his amazing, amazing grace. Tell me. 
willingness to come back to you. Oh, come on. Let's go. That we've strayed away so far that we need to get on our knees. And remember the promises that you gave us. What is that? And when fear takes over, Father, may we do just that. May we get on our knees and say we praise you, Father. We praise you for, for the love that you show us, for the patience that you give us. Because sometimes we, we don't come to you and we, we set priorities maybe in the wrong place. So Father, help us get our priorities back in place. It's a funny thing. Satan uh, will do anything in his power uh, to stop the worship of the one and only uh, living God. So uh, again, I just want to say thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I, I got uh, some uh, characters sitting in the front uh, pews uh, that have been hung on uh, the seat. So although I might not hear uh, amen, um, there are signs that say amen and speak it pastor. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I know that these are uncertain times and that is our sermon title uh, this morning, Faith in Uncertain Times. I want to share uh, something from actually from Dr. Robert Shula um, that was uh, written by his uh, teenage daughter uh, many years ago. Uh, to uh, John Wayne. And uh, this comes from a, a sermon uh, illustration uh, by uh, Jimmy Hale uh, back in uh, 2011. Listen to what, uh, what uh, Dr. Schuler's uh, teenage daughter wrote. Um, Cindy uh, was uh, in a motorcycle accident and had uh, to have her leg amputated. And John Wayne was a big fan of Robert Shuler. And he heard Dr. Shuler say on one of his programs that his daughter had been in an accident and had to have her leg amputated. John Wayne wrote her uh, a note, and this is what it said. Uh, Dear Cindy, sorry to hear about uh, your accident. Hope you will be all right. Signed, John Wayne. And the note was delivered to her, and she decided uh, she wanted to write uh, John Wayne a note in reply. And she wrote, Dear Mr. Wayne, I got your note. Thanks for writing to me. I, I like you very much. I I'm going to be all right because Jesus is going to help me. Uh, Mr. Wayne, do you know Jesus I sure hope you know Jesus, Mr. Wayne, because I cannot imagine heaven being complete without John Wayne being there. I hope if you don't know Jesus, that you will give your heart to Jesus right now. See you in heaven. And she signed her name. She had just put that letter in an envelope, sealed it, and written across the front of, the, of it, uh, John Wayne. And when a visitor came into her room uh, to see her, he said to her, what, what are you doing? And she said, I just wrote a letter to John Wayne, but I, I don't know how to get it to him. And he said, well, that's funny. I, I'm going to have dinner with John Wayne tonight at, at the uh, New, uh, Newport Club down at Newport Beach. Give it to me and I will give it to him. So she gave him the letter and he put it in his coat pocket. Awesome. And there were 12 of them uh, that night uh, sitting around the table for dinner. They, they were laughing and cutting up and they, 
uh, and the guy happened to reach in his pocket and felt that the letter, uh, felt that letter and, re and, and remembered John Wayne um, was uh, seated uh, at the uh, end of the table and the guy took the letter out and said, hey, Duke, I, I was in Shuler's daughter's room today and uh, she wrote you a letter and wanted me to give it to you. So here it is. They passed it down to John Wayne and he opened it. They kept on laughing and cutting up and someone happened to look down at John Wayne and he was crying. And one of them said, hey, Duke, what, what's the matter? And he said, and I, and <laughs> I mean, just try and think for a second. Could you imagine John Wayne? Well, well, anyway, uh, he said, um, I, I want to read you this letter. He, he read the letter and then he began to weep. He, he folded it, uh, folded it uh, put it in his pocket and he pointed to the man who delivered it to him and said, you go tell that little girl that right now, in this restaurant, right here, John Wayne gives his life and his heart to Jesus Christ. And I will see her in heaven. And John Wayne passed away three weeks later. You know, that all through life, we take for granted that people know and have a relationship with Christ. Our big idea this morning, and I'm going to get into everything, but our big idea this morning is that all Christians should know that Jesus Christ is supreme. And my hope and my prayer for you this morning is that uh, you will uh, not doubt that truth again. Satan might want to confuse us, but the truth of the living God stands firm in all things. So my question this morning is, what are you doing to make known Christ in these uncertain times? I want to invite you this morning to open your Bibles uh, to the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Colossae. And we are going uh, to be in chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 13, all the way through chapter 20, uh, verse 23. And again, it is the letter that Paul wrote to the Colossians. Let's, let's hear God's word this morning, uh, beginning in verse 13, chapter 1. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or, or authorities, or thing, or all things uh, have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come uh, to have first place in everything. For it is the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him uh, to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. If indeed you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. 
That's God's word this morning. And um, it's March 22nd, the year is 2020. And for some odd reason, uh, we are in uncertain times. And I believe, and my prayer, is that at this time right now, that a great awakening will truly take place and revival will just sweep across this entire globe. You know, during these crazy times, we must reconcile who we trust. Uh, Are we going to trust in the media? Are we going to trust our government officials? Who are we going to trust? And I want to charge you this morning to put your trust in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. What's happening this morning as we look at uh, what Paul wrote to the Colossians? Well, the whole message uh, of, uh, of this epistle uh, finds its expression. And I want to invite you, just look at uh, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Because here is where its full expression is given to us. For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, and in him you have been made complete. That is the embodiment of this message. This message that Paul was writing uh, to, excuse me, to the Colossians. The two declarations in this message are the great revelation of the Colossian letter. And the central doctrine, yes, the central doctrine of Colossians is Christology. What is Christology? It is the doctrine of of Jesus Christ and his deity, his supremacy over all things. This letter reveals, uh, as I mentioned, his deity. And, and it's not anything else but, but showing us that Christ himself is the essence of God. He alone possesses the unique nature of God. And in him, the fullness of essential deity dwells in body manifestation. Yes, what we talk about so often in this idea of the Trinity, where we have one God in three persons, and we have God the Father, God the Son. So in his fullness, in his deity, in carnate, in bodily form, we have Christ Jesus, God the Son. I've got three points for you this morning that I would like to share with you as we look at this sermon title, Faith in Uncertain Times. Our three points kind of go like this. He is the first responder. And he is the Surgeon General. And he is the one who puts the broken back Together. Those are our three points. Let's break down the text together. You know, even as we move into our Easter season, perhaps we won't be gathering as, as large groups together, but that does not change what it is that Christ did for us on the cross. He died on that cross and he rose up on that third day that we might have everlasting life. Life And within the confines of the letter that Paul has written to the Colossians, we see this fullness of deity in Christ Jesus. Uh, Even as he talked in the Gospel of John saying, I am, I am, I am, seven different times he expressed who it was that he is. And he is the living God. God And there is nothing that could uh, pull us uh, from the love that he has for each and every one of us. Let's take a look at our first point. It's going to cover verses 13 and 14. It's really a follow-up to the end of, uh, uh, of, um, uh, of verses 10 through 12, uh, or 9 through 12, really. Uh, but uh, what we'll look at is that, um, so that in verse 10, uh, you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, 
uh, to please him in all respects, hearing from, uh, hear, uh, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness, patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father, who, listen, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Here's verse 13. For he rescued us, rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his blessed son. This is what the father has done for us by sacrificing his one and only son that we would not perish but really have everlasting life. Listen to this. When we were sick, he rescued us, right? He rescued us from the domain of darkness. All of us have spent a time in our lives when we have been separated from God. I had a friend of mine, old, old friend of mine, who used to play Little League with me. My dad was his baseball coach. And he asked me, what was it that took you from being a, 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 a believer in Judaism uh, to becoming a preacher? And it wasn't any one thing. It was a lifetime spent of trying to understand the void in my life that walked Walking out of darkness into light meant that I had to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And Mitch, if you're watching, I will share in detail what that looked like, what that really looked like in my life. But when, when we were sick, and that means when we were in darkness, he rescued us. He put us in the ambulance and transferred us to the kingdom. That's right. If you are a believer in Christ today, uh, you are in the kingdom. What a glorious, glorious thought that is, even in uncertain times, to know that our Eternity is secure. That is what keeps us putting one foot in front of the other. Here's what else he did in verse 14. He healed us by forgiving our sins. And, and folks, let me just say this. Every one of us is a sinner. Every one of us had a time when we were not in unison with God. And it is only by the forgiveness of sins that we have been saved. It is his grace that has done it. He went to the cross. Yes, he went to the cross bearing the sin of the world on his shoulders. Our past sin, our present sin, our future sin. And he said, listen, if you believe unto me, you will be saved and I will forgive you of your sin. What an incredible sacrifice that truly is. In our second point, we look at verses 15 through 20. And what we see is that he is the Surgeon General. You know, we've all been watching the news and, and everybody wants to tell us uh, how much they know. Everybody wants to tell us uh, that they have got the answer to the uncertainty that is before us. But it is Christ and Christ alone who is the Surgeon General. He is the one who has the cure for our sickness, our physical sickness, our spiritual sickness, our eternal sickness. And so, <clears throat> as we uh, travel through these verses 15 through 20, Christ is the head of all things, physical and spiritual. And as I've mentioned, he is God incarnate. And, you know, 
Some of you are watching this morning going, I don't know how to wrap my arms around that. And sometimes I, I have to take a step back and say, I'm not sure how I wrap my arms around that. What I do know is that based on the word of God and, and in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16, he says that all the words in this book are the inspired word of God that he used humans to write his thoughts down. And he says that every word in here is literal. Every word in here is is true. And so when he tells me that Christ always was, that he, he never wasn't, that's good enough for me. It explains this idea of the Trinity, that we have God the Father, and as a, a, an atonement for all of us, he sent the second part of that Trinity to dwell amongst us in bodily human form. Man, I don't know how we could ever thank him enough. He is the image <clears throat> of the invisible God. In verse 15, it says that he is the image of the invisible God. When we talk about uh, faith, um, uh, it, turn with me quickly to, to uh, uh, Hebrews uh, a chapter um, Chapter 1, um, verse uh, 3, it says, And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made a purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of of the majesty on high. And what that means, folks, is that when he went to the cross and he bore the sin on his shoulders and shed his blood and washed us clean from all sin, at that moment, he was sitting and was asked to sit at the right hand of the majesty of the one who is on high. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 4. In whose case the God of the world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so they might, that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is what? He is the image of of God. We're in, in uncertain times, folks. I know that we are. I get it. But we serve a God who is above all things. In, in John, the gospel, chapter 14, verses 8 and 9, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. You know, faith, and we're going to get there, but Jesus said to him, have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? How do we have faith in uncertain times? God has shown us through his son Christ that in all things, if we see Christ, then we have seen the Father because they are one in the same. In the gospel according to John, again, verses 18 in chapter 1, it says, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. I don't know, folks. It's difficult because we're in a society today that is living about touch, feel, and see. And what I'm saying to you today, that sometimes you have to be able to step out in faith, walking unto that which you might not be able to see. I don't know how many of you by a show of hands, but there's nobody here to show their hands. Kyle and Linda, how many of you by raising your hands, sitting at home, could say <clears throat> that you have ever physically seen 
$1 million. But you know it exists, don't you? My prayer for you is that you will step out in such a way that you will see by faith the existence of the living God, Christ Jesus. Listen, he is the perfect resemblance and representation of God. Paul says that Christ is God himself. He's the firstborn of creation. And what he's saying is that that Christ himself existed before there was an existence. If, if that kind of hits home a little bit, how joyous it is to know that he always was. There are many religions out there today, many people out there today that want to try and reconcile, well, who made Christ? Nobody made Christ because he always was. There are those in religion, different religions that want you to believe that he is a created being, simply taking a text out of its context. Christ is God. He always was He always will be. And he's coming again, folks. He's coming again. No matter what type of trial or calamity might be before us, the God in heaven called Christ Jesus loves you. He loves you enough that he gave his life for you. He loves you enough that if you come unto him and profess your and confess your Belief in him, you will be saved for all eternity. Listen to this. He is supreme in rank, and he is above all things in creation. So when I listen to the media, I take everything they say with a grain of salt because I know my God is way bigger. We're going through some tough times. There are things that we need to do in order for us to stay healthy. But I say stay healthy for the purpose of bringing the gospel to those who who do not know him. That's why I want to stay healthy. He is the creator or the originator. And it is by him that all things continue to exist. In uh, verse 16, if you go to the gospel of John... Again, chapter 1, this time verse 3, it says, All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has uh, come into being. He's it. He is it. He is all that we need. Corona who? COVID-19 what? Jesus Christ, Lord of all. That is what we're talking about. And so when we look at this, uh, if you go back with me to Hebrews, yeah, I'm going to ask you to travel around your Bible this morning. I hope you have it out and open and and you travel with me. But in in, in, um, um, chapter uh, 1, verse uh, 2, of Hebrews, he says, in these last days has spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. He has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Folks, this is our way. It is the only way. He said it to us in John 14, 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Guys, ladies, kids, today is the day. Today is your wonderful, special day, even in the midst of the craziness of what we call the coronavirus. He proceeded, listen to me, he proceeded creation. He was before all things, as the word tells us 
in verse 17. And basically that is what separates him from every created entity. He is the one who holds creation together. He is the head of the body. He's the head of the church. We are the church. He is the head. There is no other. Corona virus has nothing on us. This will pass, but the word of God will last for all eternity. Amen. Jesus Christ is it. He is the firstborn from the dead. He is the first to rise in an immortal body. He went to the cross. He died for us. He was buried in a tomb. He rose out of that tomb. They rolled the, the stone away and there was no Christ. He came back and showed himself to all those that were in his path. And then after having dwelt among them after his resurrection, he did what? He ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father. He is the preeminent. He is given first place over all creation. There is no other. Satan who? Demons what? No. Television? Come on. Politicians? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It is Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. Amen. Listen to this in verse 19. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in Him. He, he writes that it... It is not anything but the fact that when you see Christ Jesus, you are seeing the Father. They are one in the same. The most important statement that Paul could probably make, and it is the most powerful illustration of Christ as God in the flesh, his deity. When we talk about the doctrine of Christology, this is the doctrine of Christology. It is the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the one and only, the Savior of the world. And when we start to think in terms like that, uncertainty is not so uncertain anymore. Because we have a God in heaven who has chosen us in such a way that when we believe into Him, our eternity is secure. Amen. Oh, how He loves you. Even when you don't think He could possibly love you, He loves you. Even if you're just so rooted deep in the pit of despair, living a life in darkness. My God loves you. Amen. He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you in such a way as the Psalms talk about that he would reach down into the pit and pull you out. David was running. David was running. He was in despair. And yet God called him a man after his own heart. In the midst of his despair, in the midst of your despair, God will reach down into that pit and he will pull you out and pull you close to him and show you a way that you never thought possible. He will Will give you eternal life with him in heaven above as he talked about by bringing us into the mansion that has been prepared the rooms within that mansion that have been prepared what a glorious day that is going to be uncertain times come on faith we should be walking by faith 
walking by faith, calling on Jesus. Listen to what Paul writes in verse 20. He says of Jesus that he is the reconciler. Listen to this. I I, I think it's incredible. And through him to reconcile all things. That what that means is that when we come to Christ, we will be reconciled. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us that at the moment, in, in that time of conversion, the old me is gone. My friend Mitch, if you're watching, at that moment, that very moment that I called on Christ to be my Lord and Savior, all that emptiness, all that darkness, all that horrible Lenny who was deep in the pit was gone. Christ said that I was a new creation. So when Paul writes this to to the Colossians, he says to them, you have been reconciled to Christ. The old is gone. Behold the new. And he says that all those who are on the earth they have been reconciled, not under meaning with the uh, evil one. All things go back through Christ Jesus. The whole world is made savable. You hear this? The whole world is made savable. Why? Well, because we are reconciled to God. And not to, and not to, not not the other way around. What what do I mean by that? I'm reading my notes, and I'm, I've got so many different things going in my head. God is not reconciled to us because He is supreme. We are reconciled to Him because we are sinners, and I know that that's not a popular word to use. Kyle uh, shared with me he was watching an interview and yeah I'm going to say it because I think it's I think it's a travesty. He was watching an interview with a, a, a quote unquote a man who calls himself a pastor. And he's got one of the largest churches in the entire United States. And he's right here in Houston. And in that interview, on a national television forum, not one time talked about sin or reconciliation through Christ Jesus. What are we doing? I'm talking to you pastors right now. I'm talking to lay pastors. I'm talking to anybody who professes to be a believer in Christ Jesus, we have been called for a purpose. That purpose is to be a minister of the gospel. And if you are a minister of the gospel, then those who you speak to can be reconciled to God. How do you not use a forum to share the truth of the saving grace of Jesus Christ? You must. You must. And so all things go back through Him. The whole world is made savable because we are reconciled to Him. Listen to this. He is the peacemaker. Do you understand? He, he's not a warmonger. Jesus Christ is the peacemaker. He tells us to love one another, right? You know, you know the drill. Love your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, with every fiber you have in your body, but second to love one another. Christ loved us so much that he went to the cross and died for us. Listen, he is the peacemaker by the blood of his cross. He defied death. He defied death by going to that cross and rising up on the third day. And he did it, the righteous for the unrighteous. Here's our third point this morning. He puts the broken back together. 
We've been talking a little bit about this and perhaps you're sitting here this morning on your television, on your phone, however it is that you're viewing us today. And you're gathered with your family in what we call social distancing. I I call it physical distancing because socially we're together. But you're sitting there and you're asking yourself, I'm a, I'm a broken man. I'm a broken woman. How is it that he is going to put the broken back together? Here's what Paul wrote to the Colossians, beginning in verse 21. He said, And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds. Does that sound familiar? I, I can easily raise my hand and let you know that I was involved in evil deeds. The moment that uh, conception took place, I was a sinner. How is that possible, Pastor? You didn't do anything. You haven't done anything. No, I was born. Even in the womb, I was born as a sinner. The fact that I grew in my mother's womb and kicked her and gave her indigestion, that was enough in and of itself. We were formally alienated. What does that mean? Well, if you don't know Christ personally, you are separated from him. If you were to die today without knowing Jesus Christ, you will not only be separated from him in this time, but you will be separated from him in all time. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to scare you into believing something you don't want to believe. I can't force you to believe. I can merely share God's truth with you. And what he says is that when we were formally alienated from him, listen again, and although you were formally alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, listen to verse 22, yet he has now reconciled you. Paul, in talking to the church in Colossae, they were being infiltrated by false teaching. They were being infiltrated by media that wanted to scare them to death. And he said, stop listening to the the scaremongers. He said, remember that I have reconciled you to me and that all you need is me and that in me you will have eternity. I don't know what's going to take place. I don't know how long this corona thing is going to go on. I really don't. But I I can't worry about it. You know, some of us are going to end up financially uh, destroyed. But in Christ Jesus, we have eternity. Who cares about a couple of dollars? I know we care, we have to eat, we have to survive. We need to do all those things. But I want you to think, not short term, I want you to think in eternal times. Listen, he says, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. He loves you so much that he died for you that if you believe in him, you are seen righteous, that your eternity is sealed. It is given. It is perfect. And you are seen as blameless and righteous, no matter what it is that you have done in the past. There is no uncertainty in Christ Jesus. My faith is certain. Even though I might not see him, I know he is. Listen uh, to this. We, we were formally alienated, right? Well, we were hostile. We were engaged in evil. He reconciled us uh, uh, to him by his death. We're seen as holy and blameless. I want to drive that point home because so many of us sit today thinking, man, there is nothing <laughs> that I could do to earn my way in. You're right. There is nothing that you can do. There is nothing so bad that you have done in your life that Christ will not forgive you. And I want you to think about that with people that you are holding grudges against. If Christ could forgive you for all that it is that you have done 
in your lifetime, how could you not forgive somebody else? Stop being uncertain because he is the ultimate physician. Yes, he's your spiritual physician. And quite frankly, folks, and this might not be a popular statement, but if he chooses to heal every single person, he has the ability to do that because he is God. He is God. Verse 23, it comes down to this, as Paul is writing to these Colossians and he says, look, you've got to somehow muffle your ears to to the erroneous conversations that are going on around you and start walking the walk. I have to tell myself that. I listen. I get caught up in the fray. I do. I'm a human being. And then I have to be uh, reconciled to the fact that it is not in this world, but in the world to come that we will shine. God told us that we're going to have difficult times. God told us that we're going to have tribulation. God told us that, you know what? People aren't going to like you because, because they didn't like me. But he said this. He said, look, I can promise you. I have overcome the world. And by my coming, overcoming the world, you too have a place in heaven with me. Listen, listen to this. Uh, in, in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, uh, verse 1. And I don't know, it's probably one of the, 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 the great verses of all time, right? Because we talk about faith in uncertain times. Listen to this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. For the convic- for, uh, and the conviction of things not seen. I might not see Christ Jesus standing in front of me, but I know that he's there. I am convicted by that because of the fact that I knew who I was before I knew him. And it is only by the blood that he shed on Calvary that has allowed me to stand before you today, seen by him as righteous and blameless. There are many that might not see me that way, but I'm not interested in how you see me. I'm interested in how Christ sees me and you should be thinking in the same way. Listen, don't let false teaching or the, or the media uh, move you away from the gospel. We must preach the gospel. It is, it is the life that is given to us by preaching the gospel. Paul affirms again that he has been given authority as a minister of the gospel. Each and every one of you who profess to be believers in Christ Jesus are ministers of the gospel. Don't wait for your pastor. Don't wait for your pastor to preach the gospel. You should be preaching the gospel every day sharing your testimony. There was a time when you didn't know God. There was a time when, when you realized that and you asked God to be your Lord and Savior. That is your testimony, that you walked out of darkness and into the light, that, that you were separated, but now you're co-joined with Him together in the kingdom, awaiting His second coming. That's right. That's right. And as I, as I close This morning, I want to share this with you. The uncertainty that we have is where are we going to go? That's the uncertainty. People are afraid to die because they don't know where they're going. I want to tell you today that if you you turn this broadcast off, and make a decision either to believe or not to believe. You're either going with him or you're not. There's no in between. Because once it's over, it's over. And so I want to say to you, the uncertainty is that we have have is where we will go. Christ promises us a room in the mansion. He never... He. um, and I apologize, we never know when God is going to use us, so we must be prepared. As we preached on and spoke of last week to be ready in season and out of season to give a message of the hope that it is that you have in Christ 
Jesus. Even in uncertain times, he shows up to reassure us that he is in control of all things. You think it's by accident that we cannot gather in a building structure and yet through social media, through the advent of technology, we are still able to worship the living God and Satan has no rule in this place. That girl, that little girl, that teenage girl in the hospital wanted to make sure that John Wayne understood the importance of eternal health. Folks, this is not a time for fear. This is not a time for fear. I was listening to Charles Stanley and I, and I, I paraphrased what he said, but I, I, I want you to hear this. This is not a time for fear, but a time for courage and a time for strength. In this uncertain time, we know that God knew it before it happened. And He knows why it happens. And He knows how long it's going to happen for. So stop worrying about that. Stop worrying, oh my goodness, I have to stay in the house. Stop worrying that I can't go out and, and shake somebody's hand. Stop worrying that you can't go eat in a restaurant. For those of you with families, gather with your family. Pray with one another. Read the Word of God and draw closer to Christ. For those of you that don't know Christ, now is the time. Today is the day of your salvation. The end is upon us and Christ will return. I don't know the epic time. None of us do. But he has promised his return. And my faith, not uncertain, but my faith certainly knows that he will return. Let me close with this last um, thing statement. Uh, it's a Baptist close, so I've got five, ba uh, five closes. Um, so this is, I don't know which number I'm on. Um, but folks, this is not a time for fear, as I had mentioned. The question is, what is going to be your response? That's the question you have to ask yourself. You will make a decision this morning and, and, and that decision is either to believe or not to believe. I hope that based on the, God, on the word that God has given to us today, that you will choose to believe unto Jesus Christ. It's nothing special that you have to do. It is simply admitting that you're a sinner. And telling God that you don't want to be a sinner anymore that you don't want to be separated from him. The word says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ was raised up from the dead, that we will be saved. And today is your time. Let me pray with you, won't you let me? Father, we thank you and praise you even in the midst of this craziness uh, that you have allowed us to gather by different means so that the word might go out boldly. Father, I thank you for those that have watched this morning and pray that if there was one amongst us that did not know you, that today they chose to live a life completely devoted to you. And it's in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen and amen. Let me say this as well, just before we close. Our ministry might not be in this building right now, but the ministry is moving forward. And so I want to encourage you to give with a cheerful heart to give. Many of you might choose uh, to give to churches that you're, you're more closely associated with. That's fine. But understand that you must give. God has called us to give. So give to the ministry that you feel most closely attached to. Here at Sawdust Road, I hope that you will prayerfully consider being a part of our ministry and giving to this ministry. You could do that by going to sawdustroad.org and just clicking on the Give tab. And if you give, God gives to you. Um, not, not monetarily, but He gives to you 
in such a way uh, that you continue to bring the gospel to those who are lost. May God bless you this week. Um, we're going to have Bible study Wednesday night, so I hope you'll join us. Uh, and, and hopefully, as we continue down this road, uh, there will be less uncertainty and, and more certainty of the faith that you have in Christ Jesus. Have a great week. Oh.